The feel the lust of the flesh. For those who are contrary one to the other, that you can't do the thing that God would have you to do. So you're not fighting a person, you're fighting your own self. Because you got a problem with your emotion, and your emotions got to be in check. Today on the Daily Gospel Network. You got to be a master source. You got to cut it off and say, God, if God be for me, who's going to be against me? And so you got to keep walking toward God. Put your mess on you. So I hear these men all the time. Most men don't want to come to church because all the church is full of mess. Okay, when you get saved, you're going to see your mess going to come right along with you. Welcome. I'm Megan Reed with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you inspiring church services and sermons from pastors, churches, and choirs from all over the country. And today is no different. Get ready to be encouraged and blessed by Pastor Gavera Johnson of Interdenominational Faith Assembly in Baton Rouge. Let's take a listen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say, he's Lord over my life. Oh, come on, he's Lord over my life. Come on, put those hands on him. Whoa. Ah, we bless your name, Jesus. Oh, come on, we're going to lift him high in this place. Put your hands on him. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. You say the name. Blessed be the name of our God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're still on this teaching. If you've been coming, you know, we've been teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And I kind of veered off to make sure that we check ourselves before we start doing all this stuff. Amen. And make sure that we're doing inventory on us. Amen. And I, and I left you Sunday with the well-favored whore that we're living in and that will seduce you at all costs. Amen? Amen. So if you're going to keep God in your life, you got to make sure that you fight for the anointing that's on your life. Amen. And that comes through prayer. That comes through doing a little fasting and meditating on God's word and make sure that you put God's first in everything you do. So, but I want to go back over to Nahum and pull my scriptures out. And then I want to go to Revelation 17 chapter to pull something out for you there. And, and I want to hope I'm not going to teach on this too long because you stay on stuff too long. Then you, you miss what God really wants you to do and say. And so I want to make sure I bring this nugget that you'll see that while you're in the earth, you're dealing with the devil's camp. Amen. Amen. And if you don't recognize your enemy, you don't know who you fight. Amen. Amen. And sometimes the Bible, uh, you know, it tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so we're not fighting one another. We're fighting the real devil. Amen. And you have to realize who the devil is. <laughs> Amen. And so as we get into this text, we're going to break, break it down a bit and let you see that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So if you're going to let God use you, uh, you're going to be used by God. That means you got to Check yourself. Amen. Amen. It plainly tells us to judge ourselves that we be not judged. Amen. Amen. And so it is your job to make sure you're judging what you're doing in the things of God. And if you don't, it will sneak up on you and bite you. Amen. 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 Nahum 3 and the fourth verse. I want to read that. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms 
of the well-fed harlot, yes. the myst mysteries of witchcraft that sell it nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. So stop right there. Um, go to Revelation 17. So when God speaks something twice, you know, it, it means to look into what he's speaking. Amen? So Revelation 17, start about that um, first verse. And then I'm going to go back to Solomon because I left y'all over there. I left y'all with uh, Jonah, and, but uh, Jesus was telling everybody in that passage that the Queen of Sheba came to heal the wisdom of Solomon. And then he said, there's a greater one than Solomon is here. So I want to pick up Solomon all of his wisdom to let you see that Jesus' wisdom is much greater than Solomon's wisdom. Can I get amen? amen? So are you over there in Revelation 17 and 1? And there came one of the seven angels, yes. which had the seven vows. Yes. And he talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. So did he call that the great whore? Y'all yeah. have y'all cell phones out, Bibles, and I look at it. I want you to look at it in the word of God. You see it on that, on that screen. Look at that screen. So you don't think I'm not reading something out of a pamphlet. It's called the great whore. The Holy Spirit called it the great whore. So we live, in a, we live in a world, but we don't, you know, we don't belong to it. We are a nation within a nation. But we still have to live in this world and make sure that the world don't seduce us with his delicacies and all the stuff that it want to present to us. Now, don't get this wrong. We have to have a balance. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to walk in, but you have to balance this thing off. If you don't, it'll seduce you. And before you know it, you will be back into your old ways again. Come on, y'all say amen to me. Amen. Now, this is a tough little message, and y'all know everybody, we just finished shouting. It's good to shout, but I got to get you through this so you, when you do start prophesying and the gifts of the Spirit start operating, that you won't let your success mess you up. Amen. 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 Don't never let your success mess you up. You make sure you stay low-keyed and humble to the things of God. Amen. amen. Now, watch what it says. Read out. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore yes. that sitteth upon many waters. So did he did he say it over in Nahum? What's going to happen? He called it a well-favored whore. In other words, this earth is well-favored. Everybody want to pull something out of it. Everybody want to be the, 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 the big chief in this thing. Everybody want to have a whole lot of money. And then the well-favored whore will seduce them to do other things. Can I get an Amen. If you don't get this while you're walking under the anointing, because let me tell you something, the well-favored whore will suck the anointing out of you. Amen. 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 It'll Amen. stop you from doing what you're supposed to do for God because now you're running after stuff that has no value. Y'all say amen to me. Amen. amen. And God wants us to have a balance, and he wants us to make sure that we're balanced off him, that when he bless us, he, he immediately tells us, when I bless you, when I make you fat, when I give you everything, don't you leave me. God simply say, once I bless you with stuff, don't turn on me. I'm a great God. I can bless you with everything you want, but don't turn on me. And the reason why folks are turning on God because they have no training on how to stay in what God told them to stay in. Amen. So I'm going to show you something about Solomon today because Solomon had, he was the richest man ever. Amen. Uh, whoever y'all like, the richest man, that man, who's the richest man in the United States, that man ain't got nothing on Solomon. Nothing. Amen. 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 Solomon had wealth untold. And the thing about Solomon, he didn't ask for it. God just gave it to him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Read, Elder, watch what it says. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. So watch this. The kings of the earth has laid down with it. See, we always want to get in this fornication stuff, but when you look at fornication, God is talking fornication another way. And you're going to see it, and we can do it two ways. You're still going to get judged. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Watch what it says. Read. Have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk. Yes. With the wine of fornication. So now they are drunk with the wine of slaying down with something they had not been slaying down with. Can y'all see what I'm saying right now? They are drunk. They are drunk with what they're doing, and they're not drinking liquor to do it. They are drunk in the flesh. Amen. And once you get blessed, you are dealing with, my God, your other members that God say you have. 
and that will bring your other members out and you have two wheels on the inside of you. And once you begin to get blessed, the other wheel is going to pop up and say, you know what, I want you to do this. And the Holy Spirit is going to tell you to do this right here. And now you got two things fighting on the inside of you. And both of them want you to sleep down with them. Uh huh. If you don't learn this principle right here, you're going to miss what God is trying to get you to do because once God blesses us, a lot of us get blessed and we leave the church and we start doing other stuff and that's because we don't lay down what we've been blessed with. And don't, I'm telling you from John Street, God wants you blessed. But you, have, you better have yourself, you better have yourself sharp in the word of God. You better be a praying person. You better make sure that you don't, my God, take what God bless you with and lay down with it. Amen. And make it your lover. Come on, y'all say amen. amen. We're going to finish out in a minute, but I need to get this across to you because it will mess your life up. Amen. Watch what the wealth, they say they drunk with the wine. In other words, you're going to see it's going to start bringing out. This is end time. I don't want to get too much on end time because it's talking about the ten kingdoms. And those kings begin to, my God, go into this, trying to take everything from everybody. And they, they drunk with it. And when you're drunk with something, you begin to go after everything. Amen. I mean, you don't have no, you don't have, you know, you know your mind be thrown off. It's open. You see stuff you ain't got to be to sin. You're just drunk. People's heads get bigger. Eyes get bigger. And so now they're running after stuff that the great whore has presented to them. Come on, say amen. Because I'm going to teach you so when you start flowing and all them gifts start operating, you'll know you can't come up. You can't let that other wheel come up in you. Yeah. Read, Elder. Watch what it says. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Yes. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Yes. Full of names of blasphemy. In other words, the woman is the world he's talking about. And my God is letting you know it's full of blaspheming that's going on. Laws are being written to blaspheme. Amen. That's it. That's it. And all you can do is stay in prayer. Because when they rejected Samuel, God told Samuel, they didn't reject you, Samuel. They rejected me. So you better have some joy about what you're doing when you see stuff because you're not the judge of that person that is rejecting God. Can I get an amen? All you can do is pray for them and make that God, ask God to help them because they're drunk now in the flesh. Amen? So I want you to stop in a minute. We're going on a little more. Watch what it says. Having seven heads and ten horns. Yes. And the woman was arrayed in her purple and scarlet color. Yes. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Yes. Having a golden cup in her hand. Yes. Full of abominations. And so had a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. And so the well-favored whore has a cup for you to drink out of. Why you think it says over there in First Corinthians, it tells you you can't drink from the Lord's cup and the devil's cup. Y'all do know what that scripture is, right? It says you can't do both of them. So I'm trying to show you how the word is put together that what cup are you drinking out of? Amen? And I know some of us like to sip and tip and we like to go across and all that, but you better stop sipping and tipping. <laughs> y'all, y'all seeing in the light of the word, I'm trying to bring a principle that once God bless you, God gets jealous of what he's doing. Amen. Amen. So I want you to see it says that the cup of abomination is coming out of the world. And so when God give you something to do something now, you got to make sure you don't drink from that cup. You got to listen to God's voice on it. Amen. Amen. You got to make sure you do what God tell you to do while you're doing what you're doing in your business. And you can't become crooked. You can't be, be a, uh, a shyster. You can't be stealing. You got to do everything the right way. Amen. While everybody else around you is stealing. Amen. You got to do it the right way. Amen. Amen. You got to make sure you're doing it the way God told you to do it. Because the well-favored, the well, he said the well-favored whore will seduce you. Amen. Come on, y'all say amen. amen. Now, you know, everybody like to get up here and be preaching on stuff. And I'm like, yeah, tell them, doc. No, I ain't tell them. I'm telling you what you can get into if you lay down with it. Amen. The minute you lay down with it, you know, and people like for people to preach on adultery and this and that. I'm showing you now that in, your, in you, there's no good thing in you. It will lay down what God bless you with. So I'm going to show you your two members real quick. And I want you to stop. You, you threw with the cup. The cup is full of abomination, right? And filthiness of her and, fornication. And, 
filthiness, and I don't know why he's speaking this fornication because they're sleeping with it. They're sleeping with that more than they're sleeping with their spouse. Come on, say amen. amen. The Holy Spirit wrote this. I didn't write it. Amen. So don't, 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 don't mean mug me right now. On, I'm giving you principles and I'm trying to bring truth to you. Yep. The Holy Spirit wrote it. If the Holy Spirit wrote it, he wants us to bring it out. Amen. 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 So as we bring it out, then they'll lay down with stuff more than they lay down with their own spouse. Amen. Come on, Doc. They'll, they'll stay up uh, all night and get up early in the morning and get out and blaze the trail. Laying down with the stuff God blessed them with. Amen. Y'all gonna say amen to me? Amen. Don't let me be the only somebody that's preaching. I'm preaching truth to you now. Amen. I'm, I'm about to go somewhere. Go to, go to Romans right quick. The, the seventh chapter. Start at the 15th verse. Now this is Paul preaching to the church at Rome. For that which I do, I allow not. Yes. For what I would, that I do not. Yes. But what I hate, that I do. So what I hate, that's what I'm doing. This is Paul talking here. Watch what it says. Then, if then I do that which I would not, yes. I consent unto the law that it is good. Yes. Now then, it is more that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in me. For mm. I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Yeah, that in your flesh. Listen to what the, what the apostle was saying. In your flesh. Dwell it no good thing. There is no good thing on the inside of you but the Holy Spirit when God saved you. When God saved you, the only thing good on the inside of you is the Holy Spirit. Everything else has to be modified and brought down and make sure that it don't bring his head up again. And you do that by prayer. So if you have a problem, you got to go and pray and ask God to pr don't kill that thing. Don't let it come up. Don't let it expose me because there's no good thing in my flesh. Come on, y'all say preach, pastor. Watch what it says. For to will is present with me. Yes, so he said two wills is present with me. I'm trying to show you something. You got two wheels on this side and watch what God does. God is such a loving God you got to make a choice who you want to serve. It's your choice. Now, I can't make you serve God. You got to get up in the morning and say God I love you. I'm going to serve the will you gave me. That's the will of the Father. I'm going to serve the will that you want me to walk in. But then that other will is going to be fighting against your will. Amen. Both wheels are fighting. Why do you think people get in arguments and fuss so much? They got two wheels. Amen. Why do you think folks can jump into hatred so fast because they got two wheels? Why you think folks get in other faith because they got two wheels? All right. And why you think folks get mad for no reason? Because they have two wheels. Amen. One of them fighting the other wheel, trying to override it. You go to Galatians, it tells you in Galatians that you walk in the spirit and don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. For those who are contrary one to the other, that you can't do the things that God would have you to do. So you're not fighting a person, you're fighting your own self. Because you got a problem with your emotions, and your emotions got to be in check. Amen. This is for the big boys and the big girls today. If you're going to grow up, you better grow up with me right now. Because the enemy will come after you and destroy you. And you wouldn't know what to do because you're thinking, why did the Lord let it know you have two wheels? If you don't renew your mind, your mind will take you to that wheel that you came out of. Amen. Everybody want God to bless them. Say, God, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. But if you don't have that other will modified and, 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 and under the blood and keep it under the blood, and you got to stay in the church. You got to come in the word of God. And I, and I told y'all this message. Everybody brought mess to the church. Amen. Everybody that got saved brought mess with them in the house. Amen. Because what they came out of, it followed them here. Amen. Even though God saved them, they brought it right here. And now that thing is right there trying to make that wheel jump up again. And you know what God delivered you from. It. And when you don't get blessed real fast, that thing will tell you, now you know God don't even love you. You know the Lord ain't doing that for you. And that wheel will kick in because God moves slower than what you want him to move. He's a God that moves with patience. And he want to make sure that you get in his will to make sure that, my God, you cut some of this stuff off before he blesses you. Because he knows if he gives you something, you're going to self-destruct. Y'all help me, help me now. Come on, say amen. amen. All I want you to do is say amen. If, if you don't agree with it, don't say nothing. But I'm giving you the good word of God. 
I'm showing you where the enemy comes in like a he comes in like a flood to sift us like wheat. But I like the way Jesus said, Peter, I have prayed for you. I have been in prayer for you, Peter. And I pray for you that your faith will not fail, not that your money won't fail, not that your good looks won't fail. I'm praying that your faith will fail not. Because if God, my, if the enemy steal your faith, then my God, you don't have nothing to fight with. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You got to tell the devil, I'm, I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of our God. And I'm going to make sure that I hold on to God's precious promises. And whatever you do, I'm going to look at God and say, God, I belong to you. And no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. You have me in the hollow of your hand. And devil, you cannot touch me. I belong to a holy God. And therefore, if God be for me, who can be against me? He has given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Therefore, I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm looking at a God that is leading and guiding me. He said the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen right there? And so you got to know how to walk in this thing because sometimes we bring all this stuff in the church. And then you want the shepherd to correct it. And I can't because you got to correct it yourself. You got to ask God how I need to get out this thing. I can give you something to get out, but you got to know how to go and pray and get out of it. And so we have to train you how to pray while you're fighting, while that thing is on your back. It's on your back. It ain't going to let you go until you cut it off with the word of God. You got to be a master source. You got to cut it off and say, God, if God be for me, who's going to be against me? And so you got to keep walking toward God. Amen. With your mess on you. So I hear these men all the time. Most men don't want to come to church because all the church is full of mess. Okay, when you get saved, you're going to see your mess going to come right along with you. Amen. When that woman walk away from you, you're going to bring that mess right here. With everybody around. She just walked away from me. I don't know why she left. That's a mess, ain't it? You're bringing it right to the church. Now, I know somebody that left you, but now you crying about somebody that left you, and you still talking about, I'm saved. I love the Lord. Yes, you do love the Lord, but you still have a fight on your hand. Amen. 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 You bring it right here. We got to deal with it until you get set free from it. So don't come in and say, uh, the whole church. Yeah, the whole church is full of mess. Amen. You brought it here. And we all trying to clean up right now and get the mess off of us. Amen. Amen. We trying to get close to God. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil and draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. Amen. The devil is after that second, that, that member, he wants that will to click in. So watch this, read it. Watch what it says. But how to perform that which is good, yes. I find not. When I try to perform which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, uh -huh. I do not. So when I'm trying to do good stuff, I don't do it. Why? Because that second amendment is making you do what you want to do. And until you get that, that, that will in that God gave you, the Holy Spirit working the right way, then it'll stop that member from working the way they want to work. Can y'all see what I'm saying today? This ABC, I'm telling you, and folks don't know this, so they'll think, why all this stuff going on? Why I get so mad so fast? Amen. Why I tell a lie every time? I ain't need to tell a lie. Lying for no reason. Because the second amendment is kicked up in you. You can't wait on God to help you and you'll do it yourself. And now that second amendment that took you from the things of God. Amen. Read it, Elder. Watch what it says. But the evil which I would not, that I do. So the evil that I don't want to do, I do. How you do evil? By your thought process. Your thought process speak evil. Your thought process say stuff. And if, you know, if your thought process is not renewed, it's going to say stuff that it see. And it's up to you to bring it down and cut it off. It ain't for nobody. I can lay hands on you until Jesus come. If you don't get on in prayer yourself and say, God, help me. God, help me. I'm a wretch undone. Amen. Lord, don't, don't sit there and don't act like God don't see you. Amen. The Lord has an eye that runs to and fro throughout the whole earth, beholding the good and the evil, and to show himself strong on the behalf of them that love him. So if I ask the question, how many of y'all love God? Amen. So God is watching all of us. Amen. While we're in what we're in, he's watching us to bring us out. So watch what the scripture says. One part of the scripture says this. When you, go ahead, read, Elder. I'm going to come back. Now, to if I do that, I would not. Yes. It is no more that I do it. Yes. But sin that dwelleth in me. So we still have sin in there. Watch what it says. If I find then a law that when I would do good, yes. evil is present with me. And so evil is present with you when stuff is going on. So nobody don't have to be around you. 
You already have it there waiting on you to mess up. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show you today, why you think God reject Sam, I mean, uh, Saul and let David live to be king? You're going to see in this text that the fornicating that we're doing, we're making the idol out of it. Amen. The stuff we're sleeping with has become an idol to us. And if anybody touch your prized possession, you will kill them. Amen. Because you've been laying down with it too long. Amen. And then it has control over you. Y'all going to say amen to me? Amen. Some, when some have control over you, you heard the scripture in Nahum say he got them through their witchcraft. So when stuff is controlling you, you get into witchcraft. This is a simple preaching I'm doing to y'all. Y'all know I like to shout and dance and preach hard. I got to, I got to teach y'all this one here. Because if you don't understand this, and you want to give somebody a word, and once you finish prophesying, you can't speak to nobody. You can't talk to nobody. You can't hug nobody. You don't want nobody to touch you. You walk around like you all that in a bag of chips, and you're not. That's something wrong with that picture, because everybody that God died for is precious. You ought to be able to extend your hand and say, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You ain't that holy where well, you can't touch nobody. You ain't that holy where well, you can't love nobody and hug people. You ain't that holy. That means your other member has come up and something is wrong with it. Jesus went around all kind of devils and ate at their house and sit there and ate. And my God, and the ones that were supposed to be holy, they said, well, if he was a real prophet, he wouldn't know who that woman was right there. And he wouldn't be letting that woman wipe his feet and do all that stuff to him. And Jesus finished letting the woman wipe his feet. And the, my God, and all of a sudden say, Simon, I have something to say to you. You see this woman here? She have a lot of sin. My God, but you, Simon, because you standing here, when I came to your house, you didn't give me no water. When I stepped in your house, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't ask me for nothing to eat. You just sit there and condemn me in your own mind. Don't you know Jesus can read your mind? Don't you know he know how to come to your mind? When you're thinking bad about somebody, he already know you're thinking bad about them. So your best bet is to, my God, think good about somebody and ask God to bless them. Ay, ay. Let's see. My, my, my. I got to come back down now. I won't get too high on y'all. I got to bring this thing to you so you'll see that there's something fighting on the inside of you. And see, we don't want to acknowledge that I have a problem. Amen. We want everybody to think we holy. I know the Lord's voice too, but you still have a problem. You still laying down with your lover that God bless you with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you don't run out here and think this is a husband and wife message. This is what you laying down with besides your spouse. They start laying down with stuff and it destroyed them. And that's a dangerous thing to ask God to bless you when you're not ready for it. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. The Lord that made me the head and not the tail. And all of a sudden, we don't see you no longer because you done blazed the trail. <laughs> you done got out the house after God made you the head and not the tail. Now, nobody can't touch you no longer. He done blessed you with those blessings and you don't want to talk to nobody no longer. You're running around holding your finances, trying to see what you're going to do with it. And God already told you, when I bless you, give me back what you're supposed to give me. You can't hold on nothing. I'm much more than what I just blessed you with. Why you want to lay down with what I blessed you with? Now you're going to make me jealous. Now you're going to make me jealous. I am a jealous God. Why you laying down with stuff that my God, you out and blessed you with because you're going to make me jealous and you're going to make that stuff out an idol. And I don't want you to idolize that stuff and get into idolatry. Yes, sir. That's why I don't go nowhere right there. Amen. Everybody wants you to just skimp over stuff. When you hit them hard, they don't want you to come and preach in their church. So I, I tell them I don't have a church to preach in. I'm growing an army right here. Bunch of, bunch of hypocrites want to just skim over the gospel, won't tell you the truth, and then pull your money out you so they can live good. Y'all going to say amen to me? 
They want to skip over everything and then they have you get you hyped and get you going then. Now the Lord just spoke to me and the Lord just said, the Lord just said, can I, can, do I have permission? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead on, Doc. The Lord just said, I got five, five people. It's going to bring me a thousand dollars right now. Five. I need five of y'all. The Lord say five. And if you're not mature and don't know that they're playing around and that they 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 not getting nothing from God, you're going to run right yourself right up there. trying to be seen when you still got two members working on their side. And I keep preaching the same thing over and over before you get here. If you're in a local church, if you're at a conference, if you're at a conference, if this was a conference and I was up there doing that, God should have been told you what to give. Amen. You shouldn't give no more than what God told you to give. Amen. Amen. You run your crazy self up here and try to show out. Your friend come, then you come, then that friend says, I'm going up there with him. And then you get up there and you don't have the money to give. And you got small children at home. I'm going to stop this today. You're laying down, you're laying down with the well-favored whore and you don't want to, my God, do what God tell you to do when you're supposed to do it. You'll take your money to somebody else and want them to take care of your own children. Right. Come on, because you're laying down with a well-favored whore. Amen. 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 I'm teaching you a principle. You got some fighting on this side of you. Look at the word of God. Don't, 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 don't keep looking like pastor throw. No, I'm not throwing off. I'm telling you, God is showing me something, and we have to live by it. Amen. It always starts with the shepherd. So I get the revelation. I bring it to you. I'm like, Lord, this is this is something that you are a jealous, God. So don't sit there and talk about putting me in your mind on anything think he is. I ain't nobody. Same flesh like you are. Just, I'm just a messenger today. Amen. You know how they say, don't kill the messenger. Amen. Receive the truth. Amen. This is truth I'm giving you about laying down with stuff that God has blessed you with. Amen. And the well favored whore is making sure that we have everything we want. That's why when the devil took Jesus to tempt him, he took him up to the top of the pinnacle. And said, so I can give you all this. I can let you lay down with all this, Jesus. You can have all this right now if you bow down and worship me. Amen. All right, Doc. In other words, he was trying to seduce him to have all the cosmos and all that he showed him. And Jesus said, you can't worship nothing, but I ain't going to worship nobody but the Lord. He put the word on him. But he was trying to seduce him to have all this. Why should I not teach this and have you balanced and make sure that you, when you God do bless you, you know what to do with your blessing? Make sure you know where your money is at and what it's doing and how you're doing. And make sure you leave some money for your children's children. And quit being mean talking about I ain't leaving them nothing. I don't care what you have been through. As a person, you're supposed to leave some for your children's children. I ain't giving them nothing. They don't come see me. So what? They don't come see you. Do what the Bible tells you to do. And you do what God says. Don't lay down with it. <laughs> you know how I'm old. Nah, you just do what God tells you to do. If you say it, you better obey God. Let's get in the word. I won't get too far off the word. Watch what the word says. Watch what it says. Read it. For I delight in the law of God. I delight in the law of God. After the inward man. After the inward man. But I see another law in my members. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the Hold law. Up. Of my I have God in me, but I have another member of law working in me. And watch what it says. Warring against the law of my mind. Warring against the law of who? Your mind. Your mind has to be renewed. And that thing will war against you. That, that member that God delivered you from will start warring against you. I say, don't do it. You know, they ain't speak to you. Go tell them about it. Say, that man, what that thing will come up. Come on, you know, the devil come right and bring all that mess. You forgot how you got, you know, you in the world, you know, man, you, you just didn't play with people. And so that member will jump up. I'm like, hey, bro, you better stop it. You call me that again. We're going to show you something. That's that member I'm talking about. That fighting member. Y'all like, no, y'all been saved too long, okay? Y'all been saved a long time. Amen. Let me, let me, let me go to, let me go to some milk since y'all ain't been saved all this time. Let me find some milk for y'all to get on, cause y'all, y'all saved, been saved a long time. Y'all, y'all don't know that that member still works in you. Amen. Read, Elder. Watch what it says. And bringing me into, into captivity. And then it brings me into captivity. To the law of sin. To the law. And what it's trying to do is make you sin all over again. Come on. Can y'all see what I'm preaching you right now? 
don't get here and talk about, you know, I'm just not there yet. You ain't going to never get there. You hear that old stuff people be saying? Oh, I'm not there yet. You ain't going to never get there because you're speaking out your mouth. Death and life is in the power of tongue. You got to go toward God by process. You got to say, God, help me to get through what I'm going through. Amen. You got to tell him that. Don't look for nobody else to tell him. You got to, Lord, help me. You know I'm not doing this right. Amen. All right. Then what you do, you have the problem. You go and make everybody else a scapegoat while your problem's still going on. Ring, ding, 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 ding. You get on the phone. Guess what happened? And you have the worst problem what just happened. Amen. You talking about somebody else's business and your business is all jacked up. Because that member hadn't died yet, but you want everybody to know about somebody else's business and you over here jacked up yourself. I mean jacked up. They don't want everybody to be like you and you hide your stuff. Then when your stuff exposed, you want everybody to fall in the face. Pray for me. Oh, everybody get in prayer. We ain't praying. Pray for yourself. Get on your own face. Ask God to deliver you. Amen. 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 I got nine minutes to work with y'all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abide by this clock today. I know it's a tough message because I know it's tough. God told me it's going to be tough. Amen. 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 I got nine minutes to bring Solomon in. I got to get off that. You threw with that? Did you get one more verse? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Which is in my members. Oh, wretched man oh, that I am. Look, Paul called himself a wretched man. That I am. That I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this and death? who shall deliver me from it? Read. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is your deliverer right there. Every time something happens, Paul is saying you got to go to him. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. You go to God. Say, God, deliver me. I'm not right yet. I'm not there yet, God. Bring me out of this thing. Can I get an amen? Bring me out of it, Lord God. And that's between you and God. Nobody else should be crossed over in your will. You already have two of them. They didn't cross over. They didn't cross over in your stuff. Now you got three wheels working. That wheel working, your wheel, and that wheel that want to bring you out of there. Now you got four wheels working. You got the person with them bad wheels coming in, then your wheel. Now y'all got to see which wheel y'all going to work out of. Amen. Well, y'all better say preach, pastor. And then everybody lying on everybody, talking about everybody. And then when your stuff get exposed, then you want to buy it. Oh, just pray for me, please. I'm going through something right now. I'm having a hard time. Come on, a minister, come that verse up, that verse up. Where it said, where you so say? then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Yes. But with the flesh, yes. the law of sin. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So you got to mortify that flesh. Amen. Now, don't act like you don't have no flesh on you. Amen. Don't act like you, you know, you walk around here all oh, with a glorified body. You're not. Amen. Amen. That's right. So you got to deal with that sin that's in you. Amen. And you got to make sure it don't rise up when the devil bring conflict and when something's going on. Amen. But I can really make you mad if I just take some of your money from you. Amen. <laughs> oh, I can find out who you are if I just take some money from you. Amen. I can really find out. I, you come right up here, you don't come to pass or not. No, you stole my money, pass, I want my money back. Church family, I pray that you were uplifted by this wonderful message. If you would like to find out more about Pastor Guevara Johnson and Interdenominational Faith Assembly, visit their website and follow them on social media to keep up with more great sermons, praise and worship, and all of their activities. I'm Megan Reed, and I want to thank you for watching The Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.